everybody, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. I'm here today in the commercial kitchen and we're gonna do a crew review of the La Marzocco Strata AV ABR. This is gonna be a quicker overview of this machine. We'll post a more detailed in-depth review later, but this is gonna be kind of the short redux version of this. So this is the two group version and these buttons mean this is the AV version of the Strata. These little trays here are the scales, which designate this as the ABR version of this machine. Why don't we dive in and talk about some of the features that it has. This machine is a 4,900 watt machine. That's for the two group version. It means it's a 220 volt machine, it requires a 30 amp outlet if you're looking at this for your cafe. This is a multi-boiler machine, so it has one big service boiler or steam boiler in the back. It's feeding both your steam wands and the hot water. And then it has two independent boilers for each group, and these groups are fully saturated. In the typical La Marzocco style, all the boilers are stainless steel and they're insulated as well. Both these independent groups are also fed by a heat exchanger or heat exchangers that are in the service boiler. So they're feeding these boilers with preheated water. So it helps with temperature stability instead of having to heat water up from cold or just the tap temperature. It's already at about 180 degrees once it gets to these groups. So you'll have better temperature stability and more consistent coffee coming out of the machine. The steam wands on this machine are insulated. You have two steam wands here and you can run them and hold them and not get burned. The hot water also has a mix valve on it. So as you can tell, it's pretty controlled. It's not crackling, anything crazy like that. If you look on the side here, this is actually the temperature control that adjusts the mix valve. That's adjusting the mixture of cold water versus water from the boiler. So if I turn this all the way up and run this, as you can see at the end there, that's now straight from the boiler. And if I run this and get it back down to temperature, this water is now just straight from the tap, so I can just hold this, it's cold. I'm gonna put it back to the middle where we had it. Sometimes baristas will complain that their water from this is cold. Um, think the machine's broken, but in reality, they just bumped this little switch right here and changed it all the way cold on accident. That's a pretty nice feature, really like that. Um, one critique, I do wish this was a little bit hidden so that wouldn't happen and there wouldn't be that confusion. But that's always an opportunity to educate and just provide some more knowledge. The controls on the steam wands, this is, I guess I would call this for simplicity's sake, kind of an electronic control for this. Um, so if you notice, when I turn this on, there's a little bit of a delay when I turn it on because this isn't actually opening the valve directly. That's kind of controlling, or it's connected to an electronic piece that is then opening and closing the valve. That means that you have really precise control over where you want your steam to be at, which is really nice. Uh, La Marzocco says those valves do last longer, but when you have to replace them or if you run into an issue, they are a little bit more expensive, but that's what you'd expect because this machine overall is a little bit more expensive. Well, that covers the steam wands, the steam controls, and then also the hot water. Let's move on from there. Now let's talk about the buttons on this machine and what the buttons do. If you look at these buttons, you can see that there's three buttons for each group and these are the same on each group. This group here has some extra detail on the bottom. Uh, this one says OK, and then you have two arrows because those are used to navigate the programming menu, which we'll talk about in a second. This little swirly button, uh, as La Marzocco does it, is your continuous run. So when you press that, it's just going to run for a while there until you tell it to stop. These buttons actually have two settings per button. There's one setting that's activated just by pressing it and releasing it. If you notice when I do that, it's flashing kind of slowly. There's also another button you can get to by pushing and holding that 
and then it makes it flash more rapidly and that's another setting that you have control of there. Same thing goes for this button as well. If I press and hold, it puts it into that mode there where it's flashing twice. So with that configuration, that gives you four settings per group. Set those how you will. Uh, they're designated as single and double, but you can program them for whatever you want. Holding down this button here will take you into the programming menu. We'll reset the camera so you can see that while we scroll through it real quick. To get into the programming on this, you hold down the continuous run button until the groups go dark and then your menu screen up here is going to change and the first thing it says is group dose settings. Just going to scroll through before we get to there. Then you get scale configuration, T settings, that's your hot water spout, coffee boiler settings, pre-wet settings, and then you can exit. The majority of what people want to know about on this machine is the group dose settings so we're going to focus the majority of our time in this overview here. Once you click OK there, that takes you to this menu, which has plenty of options in here. Um, let's go ahead and start with group one dose settings. This is where I prefer to start instead of earlier in that menu. If I go to here, this changes the mode that I'm in. This machine has three different modes for its programming and how these buttons are programmed. The first mode is by pulses. That's your traditional vol volumetrics. The flow meter in there counts how much water is passing through it and then stops at a certain point, whatever you program it to. And that's counting the number of times that that flow meter turns in a circle. The next option here is mass. That's going to be through these scales here. So you can tell the machine that you want your shot to stop at 32 grams and you can program this button for 32 grams. Uh, this button for 36 grams, and it's going to stop at wherever you are there. The last mode is brew ratio, which is a pretty cool mode. I think that uh, the best mode for a coffee shop is going to be that mass mode, but this one's pretty cool as well. So what this does is instead of um, counting how much water is flowing through, instead of counting what the output weight is, it actually calculates your output weight based on what your input weight is. So I'm gonna save this back to mass and I'm going to go into my second group here because I have this set to brew ratio. So if you look here, it's group two, button one. So button one on the second group, I have a brew ratio of one to 1.6. For the sake of math, I'm actually going to change that to 1.5 because it'll make this a little bit easier to understand here. So if I say to the machine that I have 20 grams of coffee from my grinder that I'm brewing and then put it in and press button one, it's going to give me 35 grams of espresso or 30 grams of espresso out because it's taking that 20 and multiplying it by 1.5 to get 30 out. It works really well in theory, um, and if everything is re kept really clean, it works very well. Uh, if you don't respect the tear times, and if you have water draining, or your portafilters aren't matched in weight, this can get a little bit inconsistent. So that's why I say most shops are gonna work with just the mass mode. And we'll delve more into that in the detailed review that'll come out later. But for now, um, that's all you need to know. One cool trick with the programming here, if you ever need an escape button, you're deep in the menu, you can't remember how to get out, the continuous run and the button two will take you out of there. And there we go, we're back to the main menu. That covers a lot of the basic functions of this machine. Um, why don't I go ahead and pull a shot? All right, I'm gonna do what I've been doing, which is a cappuccino and espresso just split so I can taste both and give you guys an idea how both of those are tasting. Um, I'm still drinking this Triboro from Victrola. Just enough left, actually. Just kidding, we're gonna do the Maya Blue from Toka Coffee Roasters, and let's go for it. I'm gonna settle it halfway through there. These have the 17 gram baskets in it, so 
been trying to dose around 20 grams. Been playing around with kind of overdosing and seeing how that affects uh, my flavors and my profiles. So that's why this basket looks so full. And I'm just gonna run this on the continuous run mode. Interesting note here while I'm doing this, you can program how long you have before the scale tears out. We have this set at four seconds because that's just before the espresso actually drops. So it gives you a little bit of time to get your cups there before the shot starts pulling. So I'll do that. And you'll notice, you might not see this, but it flashes until it tears. Um, and it teared just before that shot dropped, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'll get some milk, we'll steam that and make ourselves some drinks. So I had my 20 grams in, I got about 38 grams out in 25 seconds. I'm brewing at around 198 to 199 degrees. So we've been liking on that. We have these set at two different temperatures right now because we can. Let's go ahead and steam some milk on these cool touch wands. I do have to say that if I had learned how to steam milk on this machine, it probably would have made it a lot easier just because this does hold wherever you set it. Makes it pretty easy there. Transfer this over. This is the new frothing pitcher from Fellow. Been really liking this. It's pretty accurate. Let's see if we can show it off. Uh, I just ran out. Well, there's my cappuccino. And I will start with my espresso. Let's see how this tastes. That's pretty good. Uh, the chocolate really comes through on the back of that. A little bit of like orange, a little bit of citrus in there. Maybe some nuttiness, like a hazelnut. Pretty tasty. And that's a delicious cappuccino as well. Well, this machine is a great machine. It's definitely one of the halo espresso machines out there, the machine that people see um, in really nice cafes, really high-end cafes. Its price tag definitely reflects that. You do get a lot for that money in just the programming, the temperature consistency, little things like your steam wands uh, and how easy those are to work with. You also get that mix valve for the hot water. That being said, I do think there are a couple things I wish were different. Um, namely, the location of this hot water button is a little bit frustrating because everything else is so barista-centric. Then you have to reach over there. This can get hot. You don't burn yourself, but it's a bit of a shock coming from these and the steam wands, which are nicely insulated. Um, the drip tray we've noticed is a little bit hard to remove as well and tends to collect a little bit of coffee grounds. It's really only an issue at the end of the night and reminds you to clean anyways. So other than those few things, we've been really liking this machine. Look for that detailed review to come out soon. If you want to be notified of when that comes out, subscribe to the channel and uh, get those notifications as well. If you have comments or questions, you want us to cover something in that next video, leave those down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions about coffee equipment or want to open a coffee shop, give us a call. We'd love to talk with you about that. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you again for watching.